Yes. If may please, my lords and my ladies, I start by saying that election is a process. I'm Otieno Willis, appearing for petitioner number four. Election is a process, a process that ends upon the determination of the true wish of the voter. And when that process is unconstitutional, it is not enough to throw numbers that are arrived at through an unconstitutional way to assert that that is the true will of the voter. The first issue I wish to address, my lords and my ladies, is issue number six. And issue number six, caught to it, is Article 138.3c of the Constitution, which vests upon the IEBC the duty to tally and verify results from all polling stations and to declare the result. I want the court to take note of the last part of Article 138.3c. The IEBC shall tally and verify the count and declare the result, not the results. Results is the numbers. Result, without an S, is the outcome. And I want the court to notice that 138.3c is a responsibility on the commission, not on the chairman. So the first declaration of the result of the verified and the tallied counts is made by IEBC as a commission. Then the chairperson, again, the word of the constitution used is the chairperson in Article 138.10 shall now proceed to formally declare the results and issue the certificate. My Lord and my ladies, Article 138. Three sets out a four-tire process. Tire one is the polling station. Tire two is the constituency. Tire three is the national tallying center, in brackets, IEBC commission. And tire four is the chairperson. Tire two cannot function without tire one. A constituency cannot function if polling fails at the polling station. A returning officer cannot go to a, a polling station and make a declaration of the results of that polling station. It's not his function. The IEBC as a commission cannot go to a constituency and fill Form 34B for a particular constituency. If they do so, they failed it. Similarly, the chairperson cannot move from Tier 4 and go to tier three and purport to verify and tally the votes, the counts, and make a declaration. Each tier must perform its function. It is now tried that under Article 81, elections must be conducted by an independent body. The presidential elections whose results we are disputing were conducted by an unindependent individual, not a body. Because if it was a body, I would not have been served with documents from commissioners confirming they did not participate in the verification and telling of the count. A majority of the commissioners, IEBC in their replying affidavits served upon me, has confirmed they did not tally and verify those results. My lords and my ladies, I wish to state, chapter 15 of our constitution establishes constitutional commissions and independent offices where the constitution desired a function to be performed by an individual 
it established an independent office. The Office of Auditor General. The Office of Controller of Budget. But where it desired a function to be performed by a commission, it established an independent commission. The Office of El Election Management Body is a commission. It is not established as a chief elections officer as an independent office, as Wafula Chebukati seeks to run the commission. My lords, if the people of Kenya desired to have an individual, they would have simply reverted back to 1988 when we had a supervisor of elections. I will not go back into what has been submitted, but only to add on that point that where a commission has been properly constituted and the number is set as an odd number, the constitution and the law presupposes there may be dissent. And the oddity of the number is to make sure that ultimately a decision will be arrived at. In this particular case, the oddity of the numbers led to a decision of the commission. And a majority of those commissioners have told us in their affidavits that they did not carry out a tally and verification of the results. Tier 3 failed. Confirmed. Let us go to the state of mind of Mr. Wafula Chebukati on the 15th when he was conducting this function. Just to confirm to you that he did it himself. In page 12 of volume 1 of my documents is a statement dated 17th of August by Wafula Chebukati in which he says that it was his sole responsibility and that the commissioners had no role in that process. That was his state of mind. But the same person when he comes to court in his replying affidavit at paragraph 75, 76, 84, 85, he turns around and says, the commission in a collegiate manner arrived at a decision. Why is he lying? If on the 17th he has told us it was his sole responsibility. When he comes to court now, he says, the verification was done by everybody. And it's important that I point out in the replying affidavit by William Ruto at paragraph 16 and 17, he also says that it is the sole responsibility of the chairperson to verify and to tally the results. That was their state of mind. But we are submitting it is not the law. The law is everybody must conduct it. These issues which we are raising were canvassed in the minor KI case. Hele Falifa, the petitioner number one in this petition, was a petitioner there. And the court said, the IEBC, as opposed to its chairperson, upon receipt of prescribed forms containing tabular results for the election of president, electronically transmitted to it from the near 40,000 polling stations, is required to tally and verify the results received. That was the law in Maina Kiai. And they go further to say, the architecture of our laws is that the power to tally and verify cannot be vested in an individual. Supreme Court trial Odinga 2017, the court said in paragraph 292, the failure by the first respondent to verify the results in consultation with the second respondent, IEBC and the chairman, failing to act together in consult, meant that it went against Article 138.3c. That was binding. To drive this point home, my lords and my ladies, taking into account those two decisions, the number of IBC commissioners are seven plus the chairperson. The number of Supreme Court judges are seven plus the chief justice. If as uh, has been counsel, yes. do I understand you to be comparing the Supreme Court, its <laughs> architecture, and the IBC? No, 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 no. I, I wanted to give an example. I try to be very careful and not, go, not extreme. I just use the number of seven. That in terms of seven, the Supreme Court sits as a full bench when constituted. And 
the rules on arriving at a decision is by majority. And there have been even instances when the Chief Justice of this court has been on a minority. And we never saw a Chief Justice walking out there saying, my minority decision is the decision of the Supreme Court of Kenya. In the instance petition, we have the Chief and Mr. Bolu walking out saying, our minority decision is the decision of the IEBC. How absurd can it be? And to buttress that point, Mr. Nyamodi has clarified what roles were given to the commissioners as opposed to telling. The roles given, for example, to judges are known to adjudicate over matters. If it were to happen, and I know it can never happen, that the Chief Justice assigns judges some to go and receive advocates, some to go and receive VIPs, some to go and receive the media, then the Chief Justice remains with only two other judges and they make a decision and tell the people of Kenya this is the decision of the Supreme Court of Kenya. How absurd will it be? That is what transpired in this particular case. Commissioners were relegated outside their core functions and the function performed by an individual, what I call a minority of the IBC. That was never the intention of the law. On the technological aspect, as I move to summarize, I want to refer my lords and my ladies, that's issue number one, on the qualitative test of the technology. IEBC, under the Elections General Technology Regulations, conducted an independent audit of the biometric voter register. This is what your auditors said at page 32, volume one of my bundle of documents. The KPMG report found that for 81,711 persons were not qualified to be on the register, but they were on the register. Duplicates. One person has several entries. If this number was below the margin of victory, it would be insignificant. The start of an election process is the voter register. It must be a very clean document. In this case, they started the race with a register by their own audit as at the 16th of June. The register that was gazetted on the 20th of June, that register had 481,711 persons who were not supposed to be there. Duplicates, several entries. The margin of victory by William Ruto passes 50% plus one, is less than 70,000 within this margin. The margin of victory by which is declared more than Royal Odinga, 200,000, again, less than this. So the universe of the elections was already compromised ab initio, and the number by which it is compromised could affect and did affect the results. To use my Supreme Court example, I will say, if all the judges were biomedically registered, we know there are seven judges, but we go a biometrics audit, we find there are nine voters in that register. Would we say that that register is authentic? If they are to vote on an issue, and then the return is 4-3, and yet the register had 11, nine people, would we say that all, on, only those who are legitimately qualified to vote participated? I would say not. In page 34, sorry, page 36, of my volume one, the audit report finds that 638,814 entries were noted to be null IDs. You have registered voters on the register who don't have ID numbers. Null. That is the quality of your election document. And at page 37, the auditors find that they are generic users who cannot be attached to anyone, generic users of the biometric voter register system who cannot be attributed to anyone. But more importantly, the auditors found that there were 14 non-returning officers, users, accounts that had been granted access, voter access privileges on the in, in, in identity data management system. 
non-users, some of them are referred to as Embakasi South clerks. People who had access to the system and they were able to make changes on the persons who are supposed to be on the register. Non-authorized users, their own document. At page 39, audit report finds that their users who are not gazetted returning officers that have access to the database. It is important that we note this. Page 42, IBC's response to the audit queries. They said it was not humanly possible within the time available to deduplicate, deduplicate the register. That is to remove those erroneous entries. So they are confirming they went into an election in which the register was compromised and the number by which it is compromised could and did affect the results. They also purport to say that they cleaned the unauthorized users. At the time when they are doing it, your system has been compromised. There's nothing left to say. You are now running on autopilot, as the KPMG audit report says. The horse has bolted. The stable is broken. My lords and my ladies, it is my submission that when you look at the systemic issues arising and affecting the integrity of this election, should we even pay attention to the numbers which we are now being fronted? If the system was compromised from the beginning, the universe of the elections had been compromised from the beginning, that whatever numbers will come out of that universe of the election, the voter register, does not matter. And I do believe even the third respondent if he was the one filing this petition, who will raise the same issues that I am raising today. What should we do in regard, in terms of my reliefs? I urge my lords and my ladies, the problems of IEBC and specifically the second respondent are systemic, as I've said. The court should consider the conduct of this second respondent, Wafula Chebukati. And Professor Goulier and Mr. Molu. The common constant, they were the only commissioners who were in the 2017 general elections. They are the only commissioners who procured the elections technology. And they are the only commissioners again today who are dissenting. They are the majority, minority commissioners who are trying to countermand a decision of the commission. Appropriate sanctions need to arise. In light of the disobedience of the court orders in Maina Kiai, the court was very emphatic on what is the role of IEBC and what is the role of the chairperson. Very clear. When he unilaterally ignores that court order, I urge this court to take that into account when making appropriate sanctions. When the same person in 2017, again, refused to accede to the orders of this honorable court in petition one of 2017, this court should take that into account. We can't be coming back to you every election with the same problem involving the same person. It is time that Mr. Chebukati is shown that the will of the people of Kenya is supreme and he must work within the constitution and decisions by this court. That's why we are calling for criminal sanctions and appropriate reports to the DPP. Why should the people suffer constant anxiety around the elections that are being bungled when the courts have sounded themselves hoarse and loud on what is your role, what are you supposed to do, what technology to deploy, how to protect that technology, and he's not doing it. If you look at, PA, the, we've attached the PSC report, Public Accounts Committee reports, again, finds an indictment of the same person sitting in meetings where he's conflicted, 
Look at the KPMG report. The auditors are saying they are being given even the information requested so late in the day, on the 16th of June, for an, a, a, a register to be gazetted on the 20th of June. This was deliberate attempt to make sure that the election is compromised. Section 6 of the Elections Act required the register to be opened for inspection 90 days before the date, the notice of a general election. The notice came out on the 20th of January. The register ought to have been opened 90 days before the 20th of January for inspection. He didn't do it. He gave the auditors the report so late, but they still pointed out that your register has a problem and he took no remedial action. He proceeded to conduct the elections in the way that he desired. What he ended up doing is what my grandmother, Sophia Magambu, calls Nairobi Karafu, Pata Potea. Nairobi Karafu to me, at the National Tallying Centre, it is, and we've averted on our feet of it, the national chairperson of the commission called both Raila Odinga and William Root. The whole day, nobody knew who the winner was. Even the commissioners didn't know the results because tallying had stopped. I refer to the affidavit of the 11th respondents. They have confirmed even them, they were concerned. Why has the open display stopped? Why are you not announcing the results per constituency as you were doing before? That is what I'm saying my grandmother calls Nairobi Karafu. And my niece Mimi calls Piki Piki Ponki Pacamielo Disco. Because he called both of them. He called both of them. And he was the only person who knew who the disco would land on. It could have been either of them. It could have been William Ruto, it could have been Ray Laudinga. It fell on William Ruto and he says, voila, you are the president. Is that how we intend to choose our national executive? We've reduced it to Mimi's childhood game of piki, piki, ponki, pakamelo, uh, uh, Council again. Yes, my lord. I, I did uh, give you brotherly advice. Be careful. That, that language appears to be alien to this court. I'll be guided, my lord. I'll be guided. But the main point, so that we don't lose the crux of the point, is that the lack of transparency in the telling and verification of the results, contrary to Article 10 of our Constitution, completely eroded public confidence in our Constitution. It completely left a very core exercise of a sovereign donation by the people to the whims of an individual not subject to any control. And that, my lords and my ladies, should not miss the attention of this court. My lords, in our submissions, we've spoken about the DCI report and the penetration of the system. Again, just to buttress the role of this chairperson. My Lord, the DCI, as has been submitted, is set up as a government agency to investigate crime. They did find that indeed there were foreigners who had access to what we call critical election instruments. And their forensic report has established the presence of those persons. In other words, in layman's language, the DCI report has corroborated what the KPMG report has found and authorized users and access to critical elections technology. Should we ignore that and say, just look at the numbers, forget about the process? I humbly submit that we cannot now even focus on the numbers. We should not even. Because the process through which those numbers are being arrived at has been compromised. So that 
anybody inviting you even to look at the number is inviting you down an alley a process in which the wish of the people has been convoluted my land is sitting at John Muhammad representing a poor voter did you say that voter just wants to see just wants to know how was my vote converted into account and the result of the elections if the infrastructure and the process set up for that poor voter does not guarantee integrity then my lords and my ladies it is my humble submission that the number that an individual ultimately comes out with at the end does not matter if that number comes out in a manner that infringes the constitution you've come up with your number in a manner that violates specific provisions of the constitution then that number does not matter the constitution has to be upheld because the constitution is what established the framework through which we will start generating that number you ignore the constitution then it doesn't matter we've not organized ourselves as a sovereign on how to arrive at the number my lords as i move to conclude i think it is very important that i buttress this point on the meaning of article 138 3c because i see i still have four more minutes and i will not wish to donate them at the moment and article 138.10. The IBC shall tally and verify the count and declare the result. That's the first step. And I've invited the Honorable Court, there are numerous decisions from this court on what a result is, outcome. So the first declaration to take ownership of the elections is done by the IABC once they verified and tallied the count. Mm -hmm. And some of the tools of verification, number one are the Kim's kits. Because the Kim's kits were meant to send you voter turnout per polling station. So part of how you verify, you ask yourself, this particular polling station, as per the Kim's kits, how many voters logged in? How many voters logged in and voted in that polling station? Once you establish that, you check on the form 34As how many registered voters are entered to have voted in that station. If the numbers are different, then you ask for form 32A, assuming some were identified manually. Those are the steps of verification. But if the numbers in your Kim's kits are less than the numbers in the, of the votes returned and are not supported by any forms that it too is, then that's a polling session to be flagged. It means the verification has not returned or cleared that polling station. That is what the IABC does. Verification is not, as they're trying to attempt to tell us, is about looking at the UV mark, looking at the serial number. Those are just part of verification. But the verification, number one, is to identify that indeed the true universe came out and voted. And that is very important. Once the commission satisfies itself, we go to Article 138.10. In which Article 138.10, the chairman now walks out of the commission meeting together with all his commissioners, if necessary and proceeds to now declare the result. Because remember what I said, the first declaration was done by the IBC when they concluded their verification and tallying. Then the other declaration, 138.10, is done by the chairperson. And then he issues the certificate as an individual. So that to assume that the chairperson on his own can conduct or that the staff of the commission are the ones to do the tallying and verification, that is erroneous. 
It is the commission that does it. The staff of the commission are spread everywhere. They report to the commissioners who constitute the commission. And the commissioners take control of that process. And finally, my lords and my ladies, it is not the first time we are holding elections in this country to say that Mr. Chebukati didn't know what the law was. He knew. These provisions have been applied in 2013. They were applied in 2017-1 and 2017-2. And the commission functioned as a commission to conduct those elections. Why should we now move away? My lords, finally, in this election, we submit the people had their say, but the machines, technology, had its way. Please correct it. Thank you very much. Never